If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. What we'll do first here is just draw a picture that represents the given information. So the object is represented by this arrow right here, and then we have the converging lens placed in this position. Of course, we know the distance from the object to the converging lens is represented by P, and then the distance from the converging lens to the image formed on the screen is represented by Q. Notice that we have called L the distance from the object all the way to the screen. And in this case, that distance is 50 centimeters. For part A, it asks us where should a converging lens of focal length 10 centimeters be placed to form an image on the screen. And we will be measuring that distance from the screen. And so from the picture, what we are trying to solve for in part A is going to be Q. Again, that will be the distance that the lens is from the screen. We know from the thin lens equation that 1 over the object distance plus 1 over the image distance is equal to 1 over the focal length. Furthermore, if we look carefully at the picture, we can see that if we added P to Q, we would get the total length that we have denoted L. So we could write the equation that P plus Q is equal to L. And you might be wondering why we would be doing that. Well, go back to the original equation that we wrote down, and you'll notice that we have two unknowns. Both P and Q are unknown to us. We do know the focal length, it's stated in the question, but we cannot have an equation with two unknowns. And so we're introducing this other equation. And if we subtract Q from both sides of this equation, we could see that P is equal to L minus Q. And what we'll do is take that quantity for P and we will substitute it into this equation. So we're going to end up with 1 over L minus Q plus 1 over Q equals 1 over F. Now the nice thing about this equation is that it's no longer expressed in terms of two unknowns, but rather only one unknown. We don't know Q, but we do know L and we do know F. So this is a better equation. Our job is to solve this equation for Q. And we could begin to do that by multiplying the entire equation by Q, both the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So if we distributed the Q to each of these terms, including the term on the right-hand side, we would end up with Q over L minus Q plus. Now here we're going to end up with Q over Q, which of course is just 1. And that would equal Q over F. We could next multiply the entire equation by the focal length F. Again, you want to distribute that to all of the terms in the equation. So for the first term, we would end up with QF over L minus Q plus F is equal to Q. And we could then multiply by the term L minus Q. Make sure you distribute it again. And when you distribute it to the first term, the L minus Q will cancel with the L minus Q in the denominator, so you'll be left with just QF. Then you'll have plus the focal length times the L minus Q, and that's going to equal Q times the L minus Q. We'll have to distribute the F into the parentheses. That's going to give us FL minus FQ, and then we'll distribute the Q into the parentheses to give us QL minus Q squared. Now, remember, we're trying to solve for Q, that's our variable, and you can tell that we have a quadratic equation forming because we have Q squared. And to solve a quadratic equation, we have to move all of the terms over to one side of the equation. So what we'll do is add this Q squared to both sides of the equation, and then we will also subtract QL from both sides of the equation. That's going to produce zero on the right-hand side of the equation. And then on the left-hand side, we have this large collection of terms, and it does turn out that there are some like terms if you look carefully. You have the QF right here minus FQ. Now, of course, FQ is the same thing as QF, so QF minus QF, those will actually cancel out. And we will be left with Q squared minus QL and then plus this term FL. And since our variable is Q, we're going to just slightly rewrite it. We'll make it LQ. That way the variable comes after the constant. And then we can switch this around and call this LF. 
Now to solve a quadratic equation, we have to use the quadratic formula. And of course we recall the quadratic formula as follows. And what we want to do is define our a, b, and c. Now a is the coefficient of this term right here, and that happens to be a 1. b would be the coefficient of this term, which happens to be negative l. And then c would be this term right here. So we're going to be plugging in 1 for a, negative l for b, and lf for c into this equation right here. So we've gone ahead and plugged in, and if we simplify, we can see we have a negative negative l, which is positive l plus or minus, and then we have our square root. If we square negative L, we end up with L squared, and then we have minus 4LF, and this is all over 2. At this point, we can plug in the known values. Remember that L was the distance from the screen to the object, and that was given as 50 centimeters, and then F was the focal length of this lens, and that was given to us as 10 centimeters. So let's plug those values in. And when we solve this out, we should get two answers. We should get 13.8 and 36.2 and that would occur if you carefully plug that into your calculator this is measured in centimeters now we've called the variable x that's only because in a traditional quadratic equation that's the variable you're solving for but recall in this question the variable actually was q so these are the two values of q and you can see from the picture that we're measuring that distance q from the screen so for part A, we actually have two answers. We would have 13.8 centimeters away from the screen or 36.2 centimeters away from the screen. So if you're doing this question on an online homework system, you're going to enter those two answers in. Now, since there's two values of Q, there's going to be two magnifications for part B. We know magnification is equal to negative Q over P. P was the object distance, and we recall from earlier in the video that P was equal to L minus Q. So we can actually replace the P in the magnification equation with that L minus Q. And then we'll go ahead and we'll plug in the two values of Q that we found earlier. And so using the larger value of Q, we end up with a magnification of roughly negative 2.62. And then using the smaller value of Q, we're going to end up with approximately negative 0.381. And so these are the two magnifications and the correct answers to part B.